Welcome to a lesson on graphing the quadric surface, the elliptical cone. As discussed in previous videos, the degree and sign of the degree two terms, as well as which terms are present, help determine which of the six quadric surfaces is given. To graph a quadric surface, it's often helpful to graph the xy, xz, and yz traces, and these are where the surface intersects these three planes. To determine the xy trace, we'll set z equal to zero. To determine the xz trace, we'll set y equal to zero. And to determine the yz trace, we'll set x equal to zero. Sometimes when we determine a trace, it's just a point, but if we determine a trace that's parallel to the given plane, we can often find a better trace. Let's go and take a look at the equation of an elliptical cone. Here's the form the equation will take when the graph will be an elliptical cone. Notice it's equal to zero instead of equal to one, and all three degree two terms are present. However, two of the degree two terms are positive, and one of them is negative. Two of the traces will be hyperbolas, and one trace will be a point, or an ellipse, parallel to the third plane. And the axis will be parallel to the negative variable. Let's go and take a look at an example. Let's determine the three traces of this given quadric surface. Again, notice it does fit the form for an elliptical cone. So to determine the xy trace, we'll set z equal to zero. That's gonna give us x squared over 16 plus y squared over nine equals zero. Now the problem with this trace is the only solution to this equation would be when x is zero and y is zero, and that would be a point at the origin. And that's not gonna be extremely helpful as a trace. So what we're gonna do is determine a trace that would be in a parallel plane. What I mean by that is if you take a look at this equation, if we let z equal two, then we'd have two squared over four, we'd have a minus one here. So if we add one to both sides of the equation, we could use x squared over 16 plus y squared over nine equals one for our trace. Again, this would be when z is equal to two. So this plane would be two units above the xy plane, but we're gonna go ahead and use it as the xy trace. Again, this would be a, an ellipse where the major axis is horizontal and the minor axis is vertical and the center is at the origin zero, zero. Here we have a squared equals 16, so a is four. So we'll go four units to the right and four units to the left to determine the endpoints of the major axis, and then up and down three units to determine the endpoints of the minor axis. Again, remember this is not the exact xy trace, it's the z equals two trace, but it is parallel to the xy trace. To determine the xz trace, we'll set y equal to zero. So we'd have x squared over 16 plus, this would be zero, minus z squared over four. I'm gonna go ahead and move this to the right side of the equation, so we'll have equals z squared over four. Now I'm gonna go ahead and solve this equation for z squared by multiplying by four on both sides. That's gonna give us z squared equals, this will be one-fourth x squared. Now we'll go ahead and take the square root of both sides of the equation. Both sides are perfect squares. We're gonna have plus or minus one-half x is equal to z. Let's go ahead and write that up here. Again, we'll have plus or minus one-half x equals z. So this trace will end up being two lines, one with a slope of positive one-half, another line with slope negative one-half. They both pass through the origin. So for a slope of one half, remember this is scaled by two, is we'll go up one and write two. That's one line, and now we'll go down one and write two for the negative one half slope. This would be the xz trace. Now let's take a look at the yz trace. It's going to be very similar to this. If we set x equal to zero, we're gonna have y squared over nine minus z squared over four equals zero. Again, we're gonna go ahead and move the z squared term to the right side. So we'll have y squared over nine 
equals z squared over 4. Multiply both sides by 4. We'll have z squared equals 4 ninths y squared. Again, we'll take the square root of both sides of the equation. Let's go ahead and finish this up on top. We're going to have plus or minus 2 thirds y is equal to z. So again, we'll let this equal the y-axis, this be the z-axis. So again, we have two lines passing through the origin, one with a slope of two-thirds, another with a slope of negative two-thirds. So from the origin, we'll go up two and write three. There's one line. And then we'll go down two and write three for the other line. Again, these are the graphs of the surface when sliced by each of these planes. Remember the true x, y trace was a point at the origin and this trace was z equals two. If we take a look at the graph of this, you can see the three traces here. Two of them are two sets of lines. One of them is the green ellipse. If we take a look at a more dynamic graph using maple, it would look like this. Again, if we take a look at this graph looking down on the xy plane, you can see the ellipse or the elliptical traces. If we take a look at the xz trace, you can see the two lines, which actually is a hyperbola. And if we take a look at the yz trace, again, we have two lines, which could be classified as a hyperbola. Here is our elliptical cone. That's going to do it for this video. I hope you found it helpful.